everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Ashish Sina. Uh, I have done my MD in internal medicine and I have done my PG diploma in diabetes from Royal College of Endocrinology, UK. I am glad to be present here amongst everyone and uh, today we will be discussing about uh, a very interesting topic which very uh, important topic uh, rather uh, that is diabetes, hypertension and heart disease. Two of them that is diabetes and hypertension they are considered as lifestyle disease related disease. They are modifiable to some extent and they cause lots of complications which could be prevented by a simple intervention early in the stage of its development. So first we'll start with diabetes and its impact on heart and uh, its importance in causing heart disease rather cardiovascular disease. So diabetes as we all know it's a chronically uh, elevated blood sugar levels which are not handled well by the body. So an uh, important hormone which is responsible for glucose metabolism in the body is insulin. The second one is glucagon. So diabetes develops by either a, an absolute deficiency of insulin or by a relative deficiency in terms of resistance of insulin action in the body. Now both these conditions they cause different types of diabetes. An absolute deficiency causes a type 1 diabetes state and a relative deficiency in the beginning which may lead to an absolute deficiency later in the course of disease causes type 2 diabetes. Both these diabetes they are accompanied by cardiovascular disease at some stage of time. Type 2 diabetes is related more with type 2 uh, with cardiovascular disease as compared to type 1 which probably leads to cardiovascular disease later in its course. Now to know the important factors how type 2 diabetes can cause cardiovascular disease in, uh, in humans is very important to understand. When the glycemic levels are chronically elevated at that particular point of time there is, an, uh, uh, there is a dysmetabolic state in the body, there is increased generation of cholesterol and deposition of these in the blood vessels. Because of chronically elevated glycemic levels, there is a chronic endothelial damage and this endothelial damage ultimately leads to atheroma or atherosclerosis, atheroma formation or atherosclerosis and its progression and this clogs these blood vessels especially in certain beds like the coronary vascular bed, the cerebral vascular bed, the renal bed and some peripheral vascular beds also and this leads to their clogging and leads to ischemia development. Because diet plays an important role in preventing the progression of type 2 diabetes or the generation of type 2 diabetes, so we need to understand the importance of healthy diet. B where B stands for blood pressure control, blood pressure monitoring or control the hypertension. C which stands for Cholesterol levels that is the LDL which is the bad cholesterol which has to be kept generally below 100 milligram per deciliter. HDL which is the good cholesterol which is usually the target levels are to be kept more than 45 milligram per deciliter in males and more than 55 milligram per deciliter in females. Moving on uh, from here to uh, the importance of diet in controlling uh, the blood glucose levels. Eating, consuming, processed and uh, calorie rich food leads to higher blood glucose levels, sedentary lifestyle, lack of physical activity, excessive stress and some other factors like these are responsible for deranging the glycemic levels and causing chronic hyperglycemia and ultimately leading to diabetes and its progression despite treatment. From here, we'll move on to the importance of hypertension. So hypertension, which is uh, generally described as uh, a chronically elevated blood pressure levels. What is blood pressure? Basically, blood pressure is the, is the amount of pressure which is generated from the heart on the lateral walls of the blood vessels. It is in a beat to beat manner. It increases and then decreases. 
a chronically increased blood pressure levels especially more than 140 systolic to 90 diastolic is defined as hypertension now there are different types of hypertension there can be a primary hypertension there can be a secondary hypertension also hypertension is described as a silent killer because it generally does not produces any symptoms and in absence of symptoms it becomes difficult to suspect the presence of hypertension in any such patient though hypertension can produce certain common symptoms like early morning headache but still mostly hypertension remains undiagnosed and is usually suspected during any routine screening for some other comorbid condition and not for hypertension itself now when you talk about hypertension there are certain risk factors which play a very important role in its development now like diabetes hypertension is also a lifestyle related disease it it is controllable to certain extent but when it is genetic at some point of time usually hypertension develops the risk factors which may lead to the development of hypertension are poor lifestyle behavioral changes like when the patients consume uh, too much of salt they can develop hypertension when the patients smoke or a patient is a chronic smoker that patient has high risk of developing hypertension patients dietary patterns also lead to the development of hypertension consumption of high fat saturated fat rich diet or consumption of simple processed food oily food or food containing lesser potassium higher sodium and lesser fibers also has a risk of developing hypertension apart from these certain hormonal changes also can lead to development of hypertension patients who are diabetic have a increased risk of developing hypertension as a comorbid condition patients who have poor uh, dietary patterns also do develop dyslipidemia for for example either increased cholesterol levels total cholesterol or ldl levels decreased hdl levels or increased triglyceride levels all such patients who have a dyslipidemic pattern in the blood do have a risk of developing hypertension hypertension itself carries a increased risk of developing kidney disease now hypertension what it does is that it leads to increased pressure in the blood vessels causing endothelial damage which further leads to release of certain hormones from the kidneys which decrease the renal blood flow narrows the blood vessels and causes atherosclerosis in such patients because of a derangement in renal functions there is a decrease in circul uh, there is a decrease in the filtration blood because of this decrease in filtration of blood there is an increase in fluid component in the body and the total intravascular volume increases because of this it again leads to increased blood pressure and this becomes a deadly cycle which culminates ultimately in kidney damage with concomitant kidney damage there is a fluid retention in the body and this causes swelling which is known as edema this edema usually starts from the lower limbs it may involve the ankle feet leg or it may even involve the face and the upper limbs especially in the morning hours this also leads to a leakage of protein especially albumin from the kidneys and this is known as albuminuria which may either be in the early stages microalbuminuria or with the progression of damage it may be a macroalbuminuria after this we need to consider what is the speciality or what is the uh, peculiar feature of this heart damage especially in women because women do have certain differences as far as uh, the heart condition or the heart disease development is concerned as compared to the male counterparts because their lifestyles are different their metabolic hormonal physiologies are different so when we talk about women what is the most peculiar and the different uh, aspect about the women's health so the women's they have uh, uh, women after the attainment of menarche they do have a, a, a cyclical hormonal pattern in their body 
which is generated from the pituitary hypothalamus ovarian axis. Because of this hormonal pattern, what happens is females they are prone for uh, development of any hormonal imbalance which can lead to cardiac conditions. For example, women in childbearing age group, they do have a tendency of developing either a gestational hypertension or they have a tendency of developing a preeclampsia or gestational diabetes mellitus. They can, they are also, females are also prone for certain uh, autoimmune uh, vascular disease like lupus erythematosus or rheumatoid arthritis. Women also do have a, a change in hormonal pattern during pregnancy. So all these conditions they are peculiar and specific to women. Also women's heart conditions do at times present with atypical symptoms. Atypical symptoms especially during heart attack. So women do have a tendency of developing a silent heart attack like diabetics. Women do have two different forms of heart disease. They may have either a MVD that is microvascular coronary microvascular disease or they may have a broken heart syndrome. Now this coronary microvascular disease is an end result of atherosclerosis whereas the broken heart syndrome is an end result of the female undergoing excessive emotional stress and this though uh, reversible but still holds important position development of heart disease in women. So the last part where I would like to uh, consider uh, combining all the topics that we have discussed in this brief talk is that uh, these conditions they are interrelated, they can be prevented and uh, in, uh, in the interplay of these uh, disease Managing even a single risk factor helps reducing the risk from the other factors and is also uh, beneficial in uh, everyone's life and everyone's health condition. So health condition itself is not alone medicine treatment. It is uh, all these conditions which, are, which, which, which we have just now spoken about are also manageable through managing lifestyle risk factors risk factors like diet, exercise, good quality sleep, then uh, managing risk factors like smoking, alcohol consumption. So these management of these uh, risk factors is very important in attaining a good cardiac health. Thank you so much.